Hello and welcome to Nikolai's by Statistics Lessons and today we are going to talk about how to calculate 95% confidence interval and we are also going to solve sample problem. First of all, let me show you definition of the 95% confidence interval for the true mean. A 95% confidence interval is a range of values that is likely to contain the population mean with a confidence level of 95%. This interval is calculated from the sample mean and the standard error of the mean. The 95% confidence interval is typically constructed as a sample mean plus minus 1.96 times SEM or standard error of the mean. The factor 1.96 comes from the properties of the standard normal distribution or Z distribution and it corresponds to the 95% confidence level. Now let me clarify with a graph. Imagine that this is standard distribution of the values in our population and now imagine that we took a sample and of course sample is going to be just small representation of the whole population so if we have for example mean of the population here in our sample we can get some deviations for example in our sample the mean is going to be for example here or it can be here so as you see it's not going to be exactly where the true mean of the population is so as you see when we are saying that we need to calculate 95% confidence interval that means that we have to find such interval within which we can find true mean of the population but it's going to be based on the data not from the whole population but from the sample and before we will be able to do it we have to find standard error of the mean and here is a simple formula how we find standard error of the mean so we have to put in nominator standard deviation divided by square root of n where n is our values in our sample so number of values so now let's return to our problem and let's solve it a study is conducted concerning the blood pressure of 60 year old women with glaucoma in the study 260 year old women with glaucoma are randomly selected and the sample mean systolic blood pressure is 140 millimeters of mercury and the sample standard deviation is 25 millimeters of mercury so we have to calculate a 95 percent confidence interval for the true mean systolic blood pressure among the population of 60 year old women with glaucoma for our first step we need to know the sample and we know that it is 200 women and we also need to know sample standard deviation which is 25 millimeters of mercury so as you see standard error of the mean s e m in our case would equal to 25 which is standard deviation divided by square root of 200 and we are going to get 1.77 millimeters of mercury and in our second step we are going to use this formula which is given here we need sample mean so let's return and take a look what is sample mean we have in the study of 260 year old women with glaucoma are randomly selected and the sample mean systolic blood pressure is 140 millimeters of mercury so sample mean systolic blood pressure 140 millimeters and we need this number in order to use in our formula so our next step would be 140 plus minus sample 
min plus minus 1.96, 1.96 times SEM. We already find it. 1.77, 1.77 plus minus is going to give us interval from 136.5 millimeters of mercury to 143.5 millimeters of mercury. So take a look from this number, which we can put it here, to this number, which can put here. So this is going to be our confidence interval, 95% probability that we are going to find mean of the population between these two numbers. So let's say if we take 100 samples in 95%, the mean of the population would be between these two extremes. And in only 5% of the cases, it's going to be outside this interval. Now let's return to the second part B. Suppose the study above was based on 100 women instead of 200, but the sample mean is 140, so the same. And the standard deviation is also the same, 25 millimeters of mercury are the same. Recalculate the 95% confidence interval. Does the interval get wider or narrower? And why? Again, our first step would be to calculate standard error of the mean first. So, again, standard error of the mean is going to be 20 five divided by square root of 100. And this time we got 2.5 millimeters of mercury. Right away you see that our confidence interval here is going to be greater than in the first example. So the greater the size of the sample, the narrower going to be confidence interval, 95% confidence interval. And the smaller the sample, then the wider such interval is going to be. But let's plot all the numbers. Once again, mean of the sample is going to be the same as in previous example, 140 plus minus 1.96 times 2.5. Again, we are going to get to values 1, 135 millimeters of mercury and the second one is going to be 145 millimeters of mercury. As you see this time interval is going to be wider if we compare with interval which we got from 200 participants and when we have 100 participants the interval is going to be, as you see, wider. And now you got the idea that the greater number of participants in the uh, experiment, in the sample, then the narrower is going to be this interval. And if we'll take the whole population, we are not going to get any interval at all. It's going to be zero. So we are going to get just a straight line exactly where it belongs. And this all makes sense because standard error of the mean is going to be smaller the bigger our sample. And the smaller our sample, then the standard error of the mean is going to be bigger. And the range, the interval is going to be also wider. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.